What if I told you there was a secret ingredient to making your business irresistible to customers? And it's hidden in plain sight within your own business. Today, I'm gonna to share with you one of the crucial insights in marketing, the difference between features and benefits. Now, here's the big problem. Many businesses, maybe even your own, they're so close to their products and services, they get caught up in the features, the what of what they're selling. But here's the hard truth. Customers don't buy features. They buy benefits, they buy results. How will they be different after using the product or service? So the result of just spewing features at your customers is that they don't understand why they should work with you. Customers walk away, confused customers walk away. So they never really get to understand the value of working with your product or service. But what if you could flip the script? What if you could clearly identify and articulate just what your product or service does why it's essential for your customers, and how they'll be different afterwards. Well, that's where this training comes in. I'm going to guide you through the process of uncovering the real benefits of your product or service, those golden nuggets that make customers sit and take notice. So if you stick with me to the end of this workshop, you'll have your own personal toolkit to transform your business communication efforts so that you can clearly state the benefit of working with your product or service. So we're gonna unlock the true potential of your business by making you think outside of your business head and all of that and talk in the way that your customers can understand you. So for starters, we're gonna start off with a little story. Now, last time we were together, you probably remember Amanda. And in our stories of Amanda, Amanda was a business owner with a flourishing technology business. The demands of her enterprise were ever growing and it never seemed to be enough time. Now with everything on Amanda's plate, her life comprised of three critical purchasing needs, a robust laptop for her new business, a personal trainer to help her manage stress, and a personal chef to ensure she maintained her health amidst her chaotic schedule. Now, while shopping for a laptop, Amanda encountered two salespersons. The first quickly boasted, our laptop has 32 gigs of RAM, 4.5 gigahertz processor, and a one terabyte SSD. The second salesperson inquired about Amanda's needs and then remarked, imagine a laptop that ensures you won't have to wait even a second as you handle complex software tasks giving you more free moments to enjoy. It's designed for business professionals like you, ensuring swift operations and ample storage to protect all your invaluable work. It's a favorite among busy professionals needing speed and security. Now, the first statement was feature rich, but the latter spoke to Amanda both emotionally and logically. It promised her the luxury of time and the efficiency she so craved. At a local gym, Amanda met two trainers, Trainer Mike, I've designed a 45 minute high intensity workout regime and it follows a combination of cardio and strength training to get you the results you're looking for. Trainer Lucy, however, remarked, Amanda, I've crafted a routine especially for business owners like you. It's not just about burning calories. It's about releasing the stress of those boardroom meetings and rejuvenating your spirit. Picture ending your workouts, feeling not just fitter, but lighter emotionally. Now, in this example, Mike stated the features of his regime, but Lucy conveyed the emotional benefit, relief from the burdens of her profession. Amanda then sought out a personal chef. Chef Raj detailed, I specialize in a variety of cuisines and use only organic ingredients. I get ingredients supplied by local farmers who pick their produce at the peak of freshness. Amanda, imagine coming home to meals tailored just for you. Dishes that don't just satiate your taste buds, but also fuel your body and mind for the challenges ahead. I ensure every bite contributes to your health and strength. For all her needs, Amanda chose the latter options. But why? Because they resonated with her emotionally, addressed her logical needs, and presented benefits rather than mere features. Through Amanda's journey, we learned a timeless lesson. Customers, no matter their needs, gravitate toward benefits that make their lives better. Okay, so now we're gonna do a benefits deep dive and what that looks like with the examples that we shared about Amanda earlier. So we're gonna look at the emotional versus logical benefits, how to create a compelling benefit statement, and of course, incorporating storytelling into your marketing. So now let's look into logic versus emotion. Now in this example, when Amanda was shopping for her laptop, she heard, imagine a laptop that ensures you won't have to wait. Now, when you hear words like imagine, that already says 
that this marketer is trying to tap into your emotion. So that's the emotional part of the message, giving you more free moments to enjoy. Very emotional. Now here's where we jump into logic designed for business professionals like you. Ample storage to protect your valuable work. Those are things that logically are benefits to your consumer. Now let's look at the case of the personal trainer. Now, especially for business owners like you, very logical, but the picture, imagine words like that, tap into your emotional. Picture in your workouts feeling, it's telling you right there it's emotional, feeling not just fitter, but lighter, emotionally. Now, Amanda's personal chef. Imagine coming home to meals tailored just for you. Very much emotional. Satiate your taste buds, but also fuel your body and mind. Very much emotional. But here is the logical component. It contributes to the health and your strength, right? So those in, in these benefit statements, which you see is a little bit of emotion and a little bit of logic. And that's important in your benefit statement. Now, when crafting your benefit statement, how does your client's life change after using your product or service? How are they better? Now your benefit statement should be clear, concise, and focused on the primary advantage of the value that the customer will get from working with you or receiving your product or service. You want to identify the core features of your product or service and then make sure that you translate those features. Don't just leave the features the way they are. Translate the features into the direct benefit that your consumer will get. Now, don't forget to attach your logical and emotional appeal and make sure you integrate it. So again, we're looking at those compelling benefit statements. Again, you won't have to wait. It's ample storage to protect. In the case of personal training, it burns calories, releases stress. These are the direct benefits. Feeling not just fitter, but lighter emotionally. Direct benefit. For the personal chef, fuel your body contributes to your health and strength. So now let's talk about incorporating storytelling into this marketing. So if you have not realized, <laughs> You've been told a story to hopefully better convey the points of why it's so important to include benefits versus features in your marketing. So when we talk about storytelling, we're creating a narrative around a product or service. In this case, it was busy Amanda. She was looking to purchase some products. Now this allows potential customers to connect emotionally, envision themselves using the product and relate to the problem it solves. So when we're talking about this, uh, this issue of Amanda having, having to shop for these various things, you probably remember a time in your life where you had to shop for other things and then you had to decide between one or the other and why you chose it. Now, in this instance, we introduce Amanda, she's a relatable character in scenario, and this is typically the type of character based on the target audience in which you are selling to, which is why it's so critical to know who your target audience is before you are able to create compelling marketing messages. In this example, we presented a problem or a challenge. This problem should be something that the product and service can address. In this case, Amanda had to buy three different services to help combat her extremely busy life. And we've all been there but we made sure that the benefit statements were written in such a way that they would be compelling to a person of her demographic. And in all of the examples that we gave, each service provider showed exactly how working with them would solve Amanda's problem directly. Now, let's talk about some companies and some large brands who did a good job transitioning from features and moving to benefits in their marketing. So if you know this picture, if you were old enough to remember this, this is the Apple iPod. This was the first of its kind. It was revolutionary when it came out. You had a limited amount of songs that you could have on either your Walkman or your CD player. The feature of the iPod was it was one gigabyte of storage on a personal mobile music device. But the benefit was that you can have a thousand songs in your pocket. Now Apple shifted from emphasizing the device storage capability to how the device would benefit the user specifically. And after that, the iPod became immensely popular, leading the way in the personal audio player market. Next, we have Dove the real beauty campaign. So if you remember, Dove really focused on what it was made of. If you didn't want to soap with a bunch of harsh chemicals, it was one fourth quarter moisturizing. 
Dove spoke really strong to its features initially. It was a description of the ingredients and the scientific properties of their beauty products. But Dove made a huge pivot. Dove promoted real beauty and self-confidence. The campaign showed real women, not models, highlighting that every woman is beautiful regardless of her size, race, or ethnicity. Now the outcome of the campaign resonated hugely with many women and it fostered brand loyalty. The sales surged and the campaign was successful. Airbnb, so the descriptions about Airbnb's platforms, functionalities and their listings, their booking mechanism and all that was basically how Airbnb marketed themselves initially. Then they switched from a more benefit focused pivot, belong anywhere, emphasizing the unique home-like experience and authentic local connections travelers can make when using Airbnb in, compare, uh, in contrast with hotels. Now the outcome was Airbnb became more than just a lodging service. It marketed itself as a way to have an authentic travel experience. This benefit focused messaging helped it grow rapidly and challenge traditional hotels. Now it's time for you to create your own benefit statements. And here are some questions that you can ask yourself to help pull it out of you so you can create a compelling statement. So first, what is your core purpose? Ask yourself, why did I start this business in the first place? What problem am I aiming to solve with my product or service? Your customer experience. How does your product or service make the customer's life easy or better? What emotions or feelings do customers experience when using your product or service? Your value proposition. What makes my product or service different or better than the competition? What can customers get from my product and service that they can't get everywhere else? Let's not forget about your functional advantages. What are the tangible and practical benefits of using my product or service? How does my product save money or save time or effort? How does my product or service align with the values or aspirations of the target audience? What emotional needs, belonging, status, security does my product service or fulfill? How does my product or service benefit my customer in the long run? Are there lasting impacts or long-term value derived from purchasing and using my product or service? Economic perspective. Is my product or service cost-effective to the customer? How does the price of my product or service compare to the value it provides? What specific pain points does my product or service address? How effectively or efficiently does it address these pain points? Loyalty and retention. Why will customers come back to my product or service after the first purchase? What benefits drive repeat business and customer loyalty? Does my product or service help customers grow, learn, or develop in any way? Are there educational or personal development benefits associated with your product or service? And that wraps it up. Join me next week as we work on understanding your competitors. So again, this is video four of our series on developing your unique value proposition. Be sure to watch video one through three so you can come up with your overall unique value proposition. And next week, I'll see you for understanding your competitors. Till next time.